Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Eurogold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Eurogold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial, and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Hello everyone and welcome to the show. This week we'll be visiting the Grimsdyke Hotel in Harrow and the outskirts of London. But first, the island sailing ship sailed from Limerick to St Catherine's Dock at Tower Bridge in London. On arrival, Gary McMahon and his crew received a wonderful welcome. And later in the evening, there was a great get together at the Tower Bridge Hotel in London. A gift that time has made to travellers on their way Seeking out the beauty of our land Well, she's owned by the Island Marine School, which is a Limerick-based uh, community education organisation. And so she's... Um, we essentially um, are an education organisation with the medium. Our medium is the marine and sailing on the west coast of Ireland. But, predominantly, but occasionally we get blown off course and in this instance we're um, in London. She's 96 years old now and uh, so over that time uh, any, anything that, that, that survived 96 years will have a certain amount of his, historical baggage. She straddles uh, t two oceans, the North and South Atlantic, and she straddles um, the Thames now and the Shannon and their great cities, Limerick and London. And she also straddles the, the, these two nations, so she's... Um, she, 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 she's, she's, uh, she is emblematic of things in the marine. They move around. They're not land-centric. They're, they're, they're marine creatures, and uh, so they, they, they move around and, and penetrate into other communities. Lemre, you're a lady. Here's Shannon waters, tears, a joy that flows. 
the beauty that surrounds you. I take it with me, love, wherever I go. While waking in the arms of distant waters, a new day finds me far away from home. She worked in the Falkland Islands, as a, that was a rural community, islands, no road network. So a bit like Ireland in the 19th century and, uh, and Britain here as well. She's both ordinary and uncommon. Ordinary in that there were hundreds of these boats around these islands and uncommon in, for Ireland because she's the only one left. And so um, they were um, essentially the, you know, they were the, they, these were the vessels that ran the marine economy, doing transport cargo economy. She's a small representative of that great fleet, but she's, she's, she's the last in Ireland. We were with you over here in the UK not too long ago and we're back again. Uh, we, things went so well we wanted to come back and say hello. But I suppose from our previous trip we learned a lot. Uh, we learned that there's a lot of uh, passion there for Ireland and for Limerick and also that we wanted to try to engage with a newer audience in a newer way. So uh, we took advantage of the island making a, an incredible journey all the way from Limerick here to London, re-establishing historical links going back many, many centuries, but, um, re but talking about a more modern Limerick, a more modern connection uh, in a traditional way. And uh, so it's been a really exciting opportunity for us to engage with our diaspora over here. But not just people that are from Limerick, but people that maybe have went to universities in Limerick, had uh, spent time working there. And we want to just take this opportunity to connect with them and, and tell them the new Limerick story and see what opportunities become of it. With the links with Shannon Airport, I mean, it's like a, a bus route now at this stage. Uh, people are coming over and back, working here uh, uh, over a period of many, many years. I've many friends over here and myself. And, and now with, with the links that are there to Shannon Airport, it's, it's a very easy place to access for them to come back home to family or whatever that might be. So you don't feel that far away from home. But at the same time, to be able to bring a piece of home into the heart of London, I think that's something special. Uh, we're bringing that, that little bit of something special to the people of Limerick, to give them that bit of encouragement that to say that we see them, we see their successes, we celebrate their successes, but we're here for them in the, in the dark times as well as the good. So this is an opportunity to, to kind of voice that, and I hope that they, they hear that message when we're here. Michael, of course, we're here today celebrating a lovely reunion of Limerick people. We sure are, yeah, it's a great event. We even have the Irish Limerick weather. Looking out there, you could be looking on the Shannon in April with the wind and the rain. But a great story, and I think they sailed over from Limerick uh, on, the, on, the, on the sailing ship, and it's the connection with the Falkland Islands, and, and that's a lovely story, and great to be here to celebrate it. It's a real piece of living history, and actually you can see the crowds, and it stands out because in a marina that's really full of modern yachts, it stands out because of its age and antiquity, and, and they've done a lovely job flying all the various flags and so on. It really, really catches the eye, and you can see why it's the focus of a lot of interest and attention. You could say the island ship has built links between Limerick and London. Absolutely. And I mean, it's something that, you know, Limerick, we're very proud of our maritime tradition, being at the mouth of the longest river in Britain and Ireland and on the estuary. And there's a great history about sailing and, and ships in, in Limerick and the connection with places place like Kilrush where the pilots would bring the ships up the, up the Shannon estuary for the last hundred years. So it's lovely to see that story being told in a modern setting and linking it here in London, which is home to so many people from Ireland and indeed from Limerick. This is a a good example of what we try to do at the embassy and what you try and do with the Irish Britain. It's about people to people and the people to people connections between Britain and Ireland are really the rock of the relationship between the two countries. Uh, nobody in Ireland doesn't have a connection with Britain and most people in Britain have some connection with Ireland and these events are a great opportunity to reinforce and re-establish those ties that bind us. The Limerick Exiles in London are a group of people in association uh, where we, we get together uh, to do some fundraising uh, we, done, we had a good fundraising event going back to uh, November, October, November 2019, uh, which a lot of a couple of our lads worked very, very hard to raise some money. And of course, then we, we uh, done a Christmas raffle and we sold a lot of tickets. Uh, everybody that bought tickets off us become a member of the Limerick Exiles at £10 a ticket, which was great. And there was some, uh, we, we turned over quite a few pounds there, quite a, few, quite a lot of money. And uh, then we, we had a big raffle, let's say Christmas raffle, good prizes. And, uh, you know, then, you know, COVID struck, uh, which put uh, us on the, back, on the back foot for a couple of years there now, you know. We're not a big, a big outfit, but, you know, once we have a few pounds in the kitty, we can always help people. That's what we're all about, are helping somebody that's in sort of dire straits here. Simple things about we need to get people home, uh, maybe 
they may have passed away and we may need to get people home, but somebody over there has passed away. What the most important thing about it is, it's trying to, to spread the word out there. There is a lot of young people, Limerick people here in London, and uh, you know, I think more should come on board. And it's up to us to inform these young people and get them on board and make our com committee stronger, and then we can push on and have events. It was great to visit last time, but you were in London and Manchester. Um, you know, to see people that have been here, you know, 30, 40, 50 years, but still have that passion for Limerick. It was really encouraging and really enlightening, and enlightening for me to hear their stories as well, because the journey over those decades has really changed. Um, uh, and I think they're they are forerunners, and we owe them a hell of a lot because they set out on the journey ahead of us, and they made the journey for those coming behind a lot easier. So the successes that we're experiencing now, and we will experience into the future, are because of a journey. Uh, just like the journey that the island has taken all the way through choppy waters to get here into to London. Uh, it kind of represents the journey of the Limerick person that's come over here to the UK to great success and this evening we're celebrating. Limerick has got a lot to offer and we know that it's over there on the west uh, coast of Ireland, a beautiful part of the world. Yeah, I mean, economically we're very vibrant. Only a couple, two weeks ago I announced 200 jobs. There's a further 200 jobs announced this morning in Limerick. Uh, I also had a series, series, very senior meeting with Legato, which is a, a health sciences and a med tech company that's just set up in Ireland, one of the biggest in the world, and they're looking to grow exponentially. So economically, it's a very exciting place to be. Uh, everybody that comes here, especially the big companies, talk about how connected we are, the talent that's in Limerick. So maybe the talent that's living here in London might be tempted to come back home to Ireland because we'd love to have them back there because the opportunities are there for them now uh, at the very highest level. So an exciting time to be part of Limerick, very exciting time to be mayor of Limerick and a very proud time. Yeah, we, we left Limerick, uh, I think, on, on the 23rd of um, April. And uh, we say it was 850 nautical miles from the port of Limerick to the port of London. And we achieved it in about six days. Uh, it was a lot of headwinds. Uh, it was mostly easterly, so it was cold, but it, it, uh, at least there were no gales, so we pressed on. But we, were, we thought the wind would free up at some stage, but it didn't. But we're here, we got here fine, you know, so it was a great adventure. And of course I must say uh, a big praise as well to your crew because I think you've got nine of a crew with you. Yeah, nine, nine came over, and uh, including myself, and uh, six go back. So um, there's a bit of a crew change. Some are going back to their lives. We're, we're entirely voluntary organisations, so um, we, we, people have other lives outside of the boat. It's a magnificent boat inside. Yeah, she, well, she is. She's she's uh, she's a little home also because we we live in her quite a bit. Yeah, so we try to keep her as uh, as homely as possible. And um, yeah, she's a, she's an attractive ship, and um, she's a lovely wooden um, quality to her. And uh, she, she she she's a lovely um, interior. Yes, and so I'm glad you enjoyed your your visit. You're going to leave here, St Catherine's Dock, in a few days' time. Tell me about your route going back to Limerick. We'll just probably slip across to the Harve uh, on the other side of the channel and then maybe into Falmouth on the way back and then around Land's End and straight across to the Fastnet Rock and around um, Dursey Island and up the west coast um, to Blasket Sound and into Shannon Estuary at Kerry Head and up the estuary 50 miles then into our hometown of Limerick is where I live. In the arms of distant water. And new day finds me far away from home And Limerick, you're a lady Who wants to love that I have ever known Who wants to love that I have ever known it was great to get a guided tour around the boat and we wish Gary and all his crew the very best of luck on their future sailing trips. Now we're going to take a little break, don't go away, in part two we'll be visiting the Grimsdyke Hotel in Harrow. Have you booked that trip to Ireland yet? Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. 
Euro Gold is driven by being the best civil engineering contractor in the Northwest, ensuring its clients are given the highest level of service that they deserve. Euro Gold work in a wide range of industry sectors, including house building, highways, commercial and industrial build. La Vita is an award-winning, independently run Italian restaurant. Located on Rose Lane in the heart of Liverpool, real Italian style dishes, using the best ingredients, skillfully prepared by our chefs. Come and try our serious Italian experience. The Warrington Irish Club friendly and welcoming club keeping the Irish culture alive. We have Irish and country music every Saturday night, tribute nights, race nights, charity nights and karaoke. All live sports are shown on big screens. We have snooker, dominoes and crown green bowling teams along with arts and craft. Pop in for a friendly welcome and book your event at the Warrington Irish Club. Give Frank a call on 01925 243 363. Mulligan's Funeral and Monumental Services are a family-owned funeral service first established by the late Brian Mulligan in 1996. We provide funeral homes in Gorton, Manchester and Reddish, Stockport and we pride ourselves on giving a friendly and professional service to all the families who use our service. Contact us on 0161 432 0809. Press the green button and visit the island of Ireland. See Ireland.com. Welcome back. Now we're going to take you all on a visit to the beautiful Grimsdyke Hotel, based in Harrow on the outskirts of London. The hotel has so much to offer, no matter what your celebrations may be. Imagine London, but on the outskirts, you, just, you don't have that fuss of the central London, you know, tranquility and exclusivity and the beautiful grounds and the settings, it's just amazing. cater from small numbers up to 120. Um, we do different types of weddings from, um, we do exclusive weddings in here where you've got exclusive views of the whole facilities, including the 40 acres of ground. So you've got that exclusive for yourself for 24 hours. So instead of telling the wedding couples why you should have, so we do bespoke menus where people can choose what they want for the weddings. Instead of, um, you know, putting in a set in stone, that's why you need to have it. We always go, we don't want to force that into a wedding couple, so we want them to make a choice what they need to have, what they want to have for the wedding meal. I've been the gardener, uh, head gardener here for 17 years now. Uh, and I, I just love the environment. It's a beautiful place to work. Well, the Grimsdyke Hotel was built around 1870 and is set in about 40 acres of lovely woodland in the outskirts of London. Well, absolutely. It's a beautiful, beautiful place. And I can just hear the gardener here on my ear and he's out there doing the, the gardens at the moment. But of course, it's an ideal setting for weddings. And I know you do a lot of preparation for the weddings with the gardens. Yes, indeed we do. I mean, we have, uh, it's a grade two listed uh, gardens uh, and we have lovely formal lawns and some beautiful roses, old fashioned roses and rhododendrons. So it looks very um, beautiful as a backdrop for wedding photos. And of course the beautiful driveway, now that's something else. Yes, it's a real 
country kind of transformation from the busy hubbub of London into, well, you could be anywhere, literally. I'm sure every bride loves having their photographs taken here in this beautiful gardens with all the lovely, lovely colour. It, 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 it just is amazing. It, it, it's the tranquility, the exclusivity. You have to experience that. But you're right, you know, they spend so much time in photographs. Sometimes you have to chase them and say, look, it's time for you to go, by, <laughs> to, go to your meals. You know, wedding couples, when they come in here from the first minute they, they come to Grimsdyke, they fell in love with it. There's some lovely garden features, stone steps, beautiful stone walls, uh, and we actually have an ancient monument um, crossing the gardens, and that's Grimm's Dyke, which the hotel is in fact named after. Uh, and so there's a lovely moat there and a bridge, and it makes a, a beautiful backdrop to the house. Gilbert's restaurant is where we serve our breakfast. Um, we just have a la carte um, hot breakfast in there and we're serving lunches, dinners and afternoon teas. Our chef has been here for 24 years. He's an amazing chef, he's an amazing cook, you know. We've got some very mature trees that were actually part of the uh, estate. They were uh, planted by the original owner, so they're over 100 years old, and some really lovely giant redwoods, so it lends a very sort of tranquil um, atmosphere to the gardens. As part of the original estate, there is still a kitchen garden here remaining, um, and we have um, really like a potager garden, and we grow herbs, um, edible flowers, and some vegetables which uh, we take to the kitchen, all organically grown and then they're used in the, in the kitchen. Monday to Thursday we do get quite a lot of cooperative events in here. Um, not just for the bedrooms, even for team building, you know. We've got beautiful grounds, we've got a lot of team building as well. And um, at the moment we are investing, quite, put up quite a bit of investment in the bedrooms, refurbishing the bedrooms. In the main house, we've got nine bedrooms, um, which two of them are garden suites, named after one Gilbert and one Sullivan. Everyone who comes to Grimsdyke, you know, just only goes with an amazing experience. Now, I know you cover a wide variety of events, and of course you have some great Irish nights on here as well. Yes, <laughs> we've got one tonight. There has been a huge demand for that tonight. We do every year. Um, we do some other events, Irish uh, events. We've got a, a good relationship with the um, local Irish community. So, so yes, yeah, so looking forward to the one tonight. My father often told me I should go and have a try. Find a girl who wants a bit of land. And I know the way he says it, there's someone in his mind. He mother has the whole thing planned. Maybe so. Oh, I don't know what would modify the great Would you do as well um, entertainment events that we do w once a month? Um, but the best option to do, if you again go to the WOW website, click on our tab, and you will have in there our calendar events that happen throughout the year. So we do every type of private parties, you know, from um, um, corporate parties, you know, to um, wedding anniversaries, to anything. We catering for anything, and this is, is, is we got a huge demand for that.
for non-residents, can they use the restaurant and the bar? Absolutely. So we've got the bar and the restaurant and we've got the gardens as well. Our garden seats um, up to 100 people. We do serve afternoon teas outside. Because of the demand is so, so high, we recommend the people to book in advance to avoid disappointment. Um, but yeah, we do serve for non-residents from 10 in the morning to uh, 11 o'clock at night. So with our own bakery, so we do our own bread, you know, special one who sells quite a lot is a walnut bread, which we do sell quite a lot. So we do in that, we do our own jams, you know, and slowly we, we're trying to um, add in other things. So we're going to start to the takeaways as well. You can order through there, takeaways, afternoon teas, you know. Um, but yeah, the, the bakery we've got in the bar as well, the samples of the bakery that what we sell. You can visit our website on www.grimsdyke.com. As soon as you pop in, it will pop a box on the side with inquiry bot. So you fill in your details, your information, and we guarantee within 24 hours we'll contact you. But you'll go to all that detailed information, contact information on our website. And the Queen's Jubilee, we've got a special afternoon on the Saturday. So we've got a um, theme afternoon tea. It will be amazing. All, all the staff is going to get involved, you know, with the dressing Victorian way. So all our afternoon tea is with theme to Queen's related. Like we go, we're going to have our sponge, Victoria sponge. We're going to have um, some cookies with the, the dogs that the Queen has it. Uh, our pastry chef is amazing to do those decorations, so everything will be themed. Anything that involves the monarchy is open to anyone. You have to book in advance and you need to pay in advance because you've got limited spaces and limited numbers. So to avoid disappointment, uh, we recommend the people to book you know, as soon as they can because we're getting very quick and getting full. Roberto, I know that the hotel and the grounds have been used for lots of filming locations as well and quite a few famous programmes have been made here. Yeah, that's correct. So um, some of them are the Avengers, you know, the Saints, um, the Standers, Doctor Who and many, many more. And recently we did um, a singing contest programme with BBC, which is called Got What It Takes, which was launched um, 2021 on uh, CBB. I'm sure you have to agree, the Grimsdyke Hotel is in an absolutely outstanding location and the staff are so friendly and helpful. So if you're planning a celebration, why not get in contact? Now that brings us to the end of the show for this week. Henry McGlade is back with us next Thursday evening at 7 o'clock with his show from County Mayo and we're here as usual at 7.30. Until then, take good care.